Communism. History is littered with stark burning examples of its failure. But as we all know, that's just capitalist pig dog propaganda. As they say, we've never actually done communism correctly. So today, boys, in RimWorld, we're doing communism, but correctly this time. And there's only one man who can create this utopia. Our supreme leader, Rim Jong Un. Rim Jong Un. Rim Jong Un is the head of state for the Democratic People's Rim Public of IKEA. North IKEA, that is. He is that which can only be described as the Rizzler. But you'll have to wait and see what I mean. Our glorious leader lands in a bleak, mountainous area with nothing but some supplies and a dog on a world full of people who want to kill him. Filthy individuals, all of them. Basically, he landed in Chicago. As a native North Ikean, old Rim Jong is most comfortable under the ground. So he sets out digging a series of tunnels, basically turning into a New York Jew. Someone call Kevin Bacon. They're under the goddamn ground. Oh, and I named the dog Foo Q, by the way. Good, right? Yeah, it's good. For our storyteller, I chose Ariadne Archduchess because Reddit said every 5k wealth we'd get an event. This did seem to backfire, however, because communism is not known for generating wealth. What I should have done was find a storyteller who generated events based on human suffering and tyranny. Well, actually, I probably would have lost already if I did that. No one man can stand against such retarded hate. Now, North Ikeans are well known for their organizational skills. So to round out Rim Jong's first day, he gathers all his nearby resources and fucks off to Sleepyland. It's well known that career politicians are normally known for being huge lazy pussies, but good old Rim Jong Un here works tirelessly to make a home for himself and his future brain-dead starving followers. That's what makes him a quadruple A reader. That's why he's so supreme. It's not all the extra cheese. Also, Rim Jong is just a standard ass baseliner. His real power comes in the form of his ideology, which as you know, is communism done correctly this time? Supremist industrial tunnelers who worship a god emperor. It couldn't be more perfect. All commies love dumb labor. Because they have no choice, of course. You work or you die. The godlike leader with all his exalted power just doesn't care. Our labor yields are high and our men stay fuckable. Of course only Rim Jong will get to have any hanky-panky. But that's why he's a gangsta. In Rim Jong's North Ikean communist country, no means yes and yes means anal. So anyway, with all the flocks of people we will soon have joining our utopia, we will need to feed them. Well, I mean, with communism, that's kind of an oxymoron, I guess. But we have to at least make it look like we're trying to feed them. So the UN doesn't untie our balloon knots. So Rim Jong lays down the fungal gravel so we can plant copious amounts of Nutrifungus. It'll help him to become a really fun guy. Okay, and who should show up to disrupt us but the filth team? They're only after our hard-ass wood, so we just let them be and carry on with our mission of laying down the coveted Nutrifungus. But filth team's arrival spurns us towards setting up defenses. Only through powerful threats of violence can our ideology be saved. It's a good thing too, because filth team is back and they want blood. Rim Jong prepares the defenses as filth team charges straight ahead. They must also be commies because they go right for my dog, Fuku. Only a monster would eat a dog, but Fuku pushes his shit in and takes a well-deserved rest. You can't beat Fuku. It'd take like, I don't know, three dudes with machine guns to do that? <sniffs> Never gonna happen. And the business. We call this foreshadowing. We get a kitchen set up and continue our labors. Only through harsh physical suffering may we find virtue. We finally get rocking on some proper bedrooms and show the power of our Ikean ways. Cheap matchbox furniture. God damn beautiful. Our food had gotten dangerously low. So Rim Jong performs his first hunt, forgetting to eat is typical of communist societies. And it's also a great segue to today's video sponsor, Alzheimer's. Thanks to today's video sponsor, Alzheimer's, who, uh, well, you know the thing. Thanks to Alzheimer's, I can, uh, do bacon flip-flops, uh, immigrants, and cocoa melon. For the low price of a like on this video, you too can get, uh, I just shit my pants. Thanks, what's your face for sponsoring today's video? Now back to the radio. With some more hunting and the cooking of basic meals, we can start on our power supply. Rim Jong deserves the finer things in life after all. With that, all the lights come on and Rim Jong can rest soundly in his awful bed with mysterious stains on the floor. That's okay, Rim Jong. No one can judge you because you're all alone. Our first trader arrives and Rim Jong uses this opportunity to purchase a pair of breeding goats so that he may breed them and create an infinite food supply. Good thinking, Rim Jong. Oh, well, or he kills them for their meats and a short-term gain? 
Hey, no one said commies were smart, all right? At this point, we take a quest for Forced Fog to gain some honor. Forced Fog is also what Rimjong calls his penis. I was toying with the idea of working Rimjong up the Empire ladder and made him a freeholder. This goal, however, just like human rights in a communist government, wouldn't last too long. But you'll see what I mean. We now officially dub Rim Jong Un as the supreme leader. Of who? Well, no one yet. But he gives the most empowering speech no one will ever hear and takes his rightful place at the head of this utopia. God damn it, Rim Jong. Daddy Rim Jong Ilin would be proud. He now has his divine rule. Oh, we venerated Cox, by the way, which I just thought would be funny. So anyway. At 14 days in now, I realize that watching fog on high speed is hella trippy and our fungus is ready for harvest. Beautiful, sustainable nutrition. <laughs> Even Fu Q is vegetarian, just like Hitler. Rim Jong idolizes Hitler and his authoritarian ways. Except Rim Jong can't grow a mustache, well, because he's Asian. So he grows his mustache a little more down south. Makes it look like an angry bussy. Thank God he covers it up with a leaf, am I right? We swap out our cave walls with some fancy marble. Another visitor arrives who sold us a DPRK helmet. Rim Jong may as well get a little protection for the days to come for his story will be one steeped in the tradition of communist violence. With our new militarization efforts, what better way to celebrate than a missile test launch? We're coming for you, America. <laughs> you pussies scared yet? We then begin producing concrete and lay out a defensive area we'll refer to as the dehumanizing murder zone, or the DMZ. It will be our bulwark against capitalism and their excellent ideas. There's no room for those here. God, he's working so fast. Crank this up to the speed of dark, Bubba. That's Baba Jabini speed player. Dash fast. Then the chance for a deserter quest. You know, maybe Rimjong has been slowly cast aside and alienated from the rest of the world. Maybe the Empire who once liked him now found his ideologic ways revolting. Maybe Rimjong starts his arc of evil. Why not, I say? We accept. And the deserter joins us. We're now exiled from the Empire and marked as enemy. Unfortunately, this deserter is addicted to go juice, which really kind of sucks but he fits right in. Only through suffering can a kami gain enlightenment. And finally, with another good little kami, we can name our glorious utopia. I didn't actually realize this until editing, that I put in the wrong word. I put diplomatic when it should have been democratic, so you know, may maybe it's just my way to avoid copyright infringement? Yeah, that. So we're now the diplomatic people's Rimpublic of Ikea, living in the beautiful land of North Ikea. Brings a goddamn tear to your eye, don't it, boy? Also, to follow our Ikean ways, we renamed the deserter to Flugtag. Yes, this naming theme will continue. Our citizens are seen as cheap, replaceable furniture items, basically. True commies, I say. Flugtag is also an excellent chef, so that's cool. The Empire finally comes for old Flugtag. We hastily built more defenses and take pot shots when they come close. But they attack our infrastructure and the unfinished DMZ. And then, Fuku was caught outside. These capitalist monsters attacked our beloved Fuku. We bravely hide in our tunnels while Fuku bleeds out and the Cappies attack our concrete walls. They eventually give up and leave, allowing us to celebrate victory. Well, kind of. We didn't get the quest reward of psychic neuroformers, which sort of put a hamper on my plans. Rimjong was going to become a psychic kami badass, but uh, no, that'll have to wait, I guess. So we rebuild what we had lost, though we could never rebuild our beloved Fuku. So of course we offer this hero a true communist burial, one befitting the highest honors we can bestow. For the hero Fuku, we carve up his mangled corpse for food. It is the Kami way, after all. Wow, is it dirty in this fucking base too, eh? Back to our labors. We must complete the DMZ, and with the arrival of a visitor, it was time to use the greatest power that communism commands. Endless waves of brainwashed warm bodies. So a prison is constructed and this random unfortunate woman is kidnapped for propagandizing. It's a word, don't look it up. We're now enemies with her faction, but Rimjong doesn't care. He's focused solely on completing the DMZ. The newly kidnapped woman is successfully turned into a good little commie, and our recruitment efforts begin. Also, I thought it was funny that a booma cow, or whatever they're called, fell from the sky named Crybaby. Damn, baby, don't cry about it. Ha-ha! <laughs> anyway, DMZ. Wow, so good. I don't remember at this point if this fence thing I'm trying actually works, but we're trying it anyways. We get a quest for our relic item, the Bowl of Hunger. But this video, we won't pursue it. That'll have to come later. A mole woman falls from the sky, and we now have a new mouth breather to convert. Wow, I can't talk. It's kind of fitting because we're tunnel dwellers and she's a mole. Poetic, really. Also, Rimjong is now RPing as a COVID-fearing doctor or something, I don't know. Just, just fucking go with it. And don't forget your booster. We complete the DMZ, so now Rimjong can relax. Those Western powers will have a tough time cracking this egg 
so we focus on our base now. And with all these extra mouths, we're running out of food, as is tradition. Luckily, a trader shows up and we buy all their pemmican to prolong our suffering. The mole woman is now also a good little commie. I really gotta convert Flugtog. He's kind of acting like a bitch. But with his go juice addiction, he may not be long for this world. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. That's the fun. For recreation, I made five finger fillet table or something, whatever it's called. So now my guys keep cutting their fingers. Kind of like those evil Illuminati fucks. But in Rimjong's case, he must be a member of the... Illuminati. Eh? Eh? Illuminati? Cause he's Asian? That's not racist, you're racist. And we successfully recruited that woman from earlier. So naturally being supreme reader, Rim Jong seduces her and they're now lovers. He just had to tell her a story about authoritarians. Typical commie love story. Wow. Got that quadruple A puss now, bae. Gonna make them try for a baby too. Cause we all know that's one thing commies do well. I mean, unless you're a woman. Then, uh, well, you don't do so well as a baby. Ain't that right, China? Oh, and happy International Women's Day, boys. <laughs> what do you think she's doing to you mans? Good thing no one can question Rim Jong's authority, pegging or not. And with a suspicious stain next to the bed, they get that freak on. Then Rim Jong is back to work. He's just so committed. Wow, and she's already pregnant. Your man's is a fertile myrtle. Gotta live bringing up children in this hellscaped authoritarian utopia. We accept a phytokin into our society. Just like what she needs to survive, she's kind of trash. But she's got some good plant skill, and she's already a good little commie, so we save tons of conversion overhead. A raid comes for her, and we can now test out the power of our newly formed DMZ. The team lines up, ready to face the capitalist horse cats. And within an instant, it was over. The DMZ is fucking OP, bitch just as Rimjong pranned it. They should have sent nudes instead of soldiers. Now it's time once again to focus on our mountain home. Expansion waits for no man. On a sad note, we had to deconstruct Fuku's old bed. R.I.P. Pooch. R.I.P. But now we can promote our plant bitch to the fist of the Supreme Reader. She does have bang and social. This will help us spread our brainwashing throughout the world. We all come down with a little bout of food poisoning, which is especially bad for the pregnant gal. She's gonna be firing out of both ends. Nice and sloppy. Just the way Rim Jong likes it, they gonna save thousands on lube. <laughs> Prego Gal is also starving. Very uh, true to theme for this video, huh? Our wealth starts taking off. Eh, kinda. And it only took 47 days. But unfortunately, Rim Jong and his baby mama broke up. She couldn't handle his awesome power or something. I don't know. I'm gonna keep making them sleep together, though. She is bearing the supreme heir after all. But it's all right. You mans will get some more poon tang. Plenty of fish in that sea. Remember, boys, bitches come and go but the film in the spank bank is forever. Then Flugtog has a birthday and becomes frail. That combined with his go-juice addiction is making him less and less attractive. Maybe we'll make this colony just Rimjong and his harem of commie bitches. I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll see how it plays out. We then recruit our mole woman. Her mining skill for sure will come in handy. And it's another potential wench for the Supreme Leader. We take a quest to save a royal from a manhunting raccoon, who of course stands no chance against the mighty DMZ. It's weird, even though the Empire hates us, they let us save their dude. He fucks off in his shuttle and Rimjong did not get any of the honor. So it was kind of a waste of a spike trap? Oh well, we tried. The West just won't accept us. For no fault of our own, of course. Until this point, I also forgot to name everyone else. So now we have Ibenflag, Gutenberg, and Zibberschnick. Welcome to North Ikea, fuckers. We try once more to convert Flugtag, but it doesn't work. He must be a Western spy. Also, it's important to note that none of our guys have a high intellectual skill. So our research this whole time has been very, very stagnant, which really fucking sucks. But hey, you know, it is what it is. Progress is slow, but again, I guess that really sums up the Kami experience. A lack of innovation. Zibberschnick becomes upset because I forgot to make her a bed and goes on a food binge eating what little food we don't have. So, that's cool. If I didn't need her, we'd have an execution. Lucky for her, I require her skills. So we make her a bedroom and build a commie ideology room. They're digging faster than a Hasidic Jew. Like the ghost of Bacon's past, it's after their extra skin have an ass. I'm talking a lit fire under that ass, bubba. Due to everyone's bad moods, Rimjong gives a propagandist leader speech. It was encouraging, thankfully, so with every little bit helping, we may end up being saved some more of these binges. Good job, Rimjong. Good job. Like a true politician, the man can lie. Or in this case, rye. Huh? Too far? I don't know, fuck it. We increase our power production to ensure our industrialization can continue and set up fishing zones. With tons of idle colonists, they may as well do something in their downtime. I'll admit I'm not running this colony very well, but hey, I'm leaning into the commie lifestyle, all right? Get off my dick. Now we do something that should have been done at the very start. Growing fields. We lay down all the things a colony could need. Rice, obviously. 
Cotton, Heorroot, and Psychite. I really dropped the ball on this one. But better late than never, I suppose. In my defense, it was only Rimjong for a long time, alright? But now our little commies can set off to work in the fields. We also get a quarry down because manual labor is sexy. Almost as sexy as Islamic terrorism, who? We then accept a quest for a new colonist on the hope that they'll be good at research. They weren't. It's a low mate who's 13, so not great. And now we're raided because of it. Obviously, they fell to the mighty DMZ, but we got more commie-type clothes, so it wasn't all bad. Ah, work in the fields. Just as a good little Kami should. Nice. Our new cat girl is a decent chef, so Flugtog can spend his days researching with a whopping skill of four. It's the best in the colony. So it's slow, but it's at least something. After then looking into what makes a cat girl a cat girl, I saw that they needed lovin' to live. Which, I mean, normally wouldn't be a problem, except this cat girl is 13. Now then, now, now, her chronological age is 90. Rimworld made me do this, all right? I didn't make the rules, but if anyone is gonna do it, it's Rimjong. On his finger-cutting Epstein Island like type mountain base. 90, she's 90, all right. I aptly name her Poonter Trap and then attempt the seduction to save her life, goddammit. I didn't choose this. And I'll tell you what, boys, thank God it didn't work. Turns out the death from celibacy doesn't kick in until 16, which, I mean, is still not good, but it's better, maybe, I guess. Not really, not not at all, really. Blame Rimworld. But it looks like I won't have to change Rimjong's name to Muhammad after all. So anyway, let's move on. We expand the base yet again to get a crafting room set up. Then alpha beavers come waltzing through. Must be Punta Trap's family. Eh? Eh? But I take a quest to fight some dudes for a vanometric power cell. I send Gutenberg out on a caravan just to bring her right back in to satisfy her wanderlust. A little cheesy, but I need their moods fixed, damn it. We're super close to carpet making, which will allow us to finally get some gorgeous North Ikean banners and flags to spruce up this joint a little bit. But we just need a cotton harvest first. Showing again why I should have started this ages ago. We made a conversion staff for Gunterberg and converted Puntertrap to communism. Super fast too, might I add. These young, weak minds are so malleable and easy to brainwash. I bet I could convince her that she's actually a boy in like three seconds. Wow. Now that'd be evil, wouldn't it? Good thing people don't do that nonsense. Ha ha. Oh, and check this out. A North Ikean car company is born. Let me present to you the Daewoo. Fit for a commie king. The only way to ride in style. This puppy has a whopping one manpower engine. Ikean engineering, wow. I don't know how you turn off its engine though, but uh, that was fun, I guess. The raid finally comes and you already know they fell to the DMZ. I tried to capture two of them, but unfortunately they perished on a cold stone slab in a pool of their own blood. So guess our ranks won't grow on this day, or will it? Ibn Flag is in labor. Time for Rimjong Supreme Baby to be born. Man, I love a good intense dilation. She pushes and pushes and poops and pushes and then, a baby. Due to the pain, she becomes an optimist, and the baby couldn't be healthier. That's a Kami healthcare win if I've ever seen one. Probably the only one. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, I thank you. And I want you to help me name this baby. Put your baby name suggestions down in the comments below and I'll pick from that. Also, this will continue for a little while as a series. That's right, we're back to Let's Plays. Well, kind of. At least for now. So expect some more Rimjong in the near future. Will this baby be the promised child of legend? To bring communism around the world? Or will Rimjong run this colony into the ground and the commies die off? I don't know. We'll find out in the next episode of Rimjong's Ball Z. So anyway, a special thanks to the members of the Cheesemonger Society, who I'd like to make starve in my mountain base. I'll catch you cats on the flippity flop, and as always, I love you, bye.